I represent the Big First District of Kansas. There's a strong relationship between the Kansas economy and aviation. There are 91,000 jobs attributed to the aviation industry in my state, including 42,000 from the aerospace manufacturing um, segment. Aviation ranks second in economic impact in Kansas only to agriculture. For our aviation industry to thrive, the FAA needs a roadmap of updated congressional priorities to adopt long overdue policy changes and regulatory requirements. Delays in rulemaking and insufficiencies in the workforce are bottlenecking the industry. It's imperative that Congress passes the reauthorization bill so the FAA, its workforce, and the aviation industry are able to address the backlog of concerns that my colleagues and I have all been raising for months so that American, America can return to its gold standard status in aviation. Uh, a few questions, um, Mr. Whitaker. We've heard a lot about the FAA's rulemaking process and the importance of it for innovation, uh, safety, and international leadership. What will you do under your tenure to make this process more timely, transparent, and accountable? Thank you, sir. I, I think there, transparency in general, I think, needs to be improved and, and efficiency needs to be improved delivering services, registrations, for example, uh, certification process. So we are working on those issues. Rulemaking is a little different because it's driven by the uh, uh, Administrative Procedures Act, so we are required to have certain time periods for comment and certain process and procedures. I think the, the, the best we can do is make sure we get that transparency and, and know where we are in the process and try to keep the process moving. Uh, rulemaking can have a dozen different steps in it and just make sure that we're continuing to keep sunlight on that and, 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 and keep things moving as quickly as we can within the confines of that law. And uh, they, can you specifically address um, unmanned aerial systems? Um, in other words, you know, how is the FAA adapting its regulatory framework to accommodate the rapid evolution of unmanned aerial systems um, and advanced air mobility technologies? I think we've got to acknowledge that this you know, is, is here to stay. It's, it's a growing part of the aviation industry, tremendous potential for Kansas and the rest of the country. And how do we make sure the FAA is, is appropriately and quickly reviewing these new technologies um, with safety front and center, but also not having unnecessary delays as well. Yeah, it, it, is, it is one of our big challenges, and, and, and right now I think it's mostly been dealt with in, in a, in a one-off manner. So I think recently we've gotten much better on the small UAS and through this exemption process, so we've been able to satisfy a lot of the BV loss operations and such. Uh, advanced air mobility currently would have to operate under existing rules, which you know, is doable but not scalable, if you will. So I think what we need to do is work as an industry with all stakeholders to develop that roadmap that integrates all these technologies uh, and tries to keep up with their pace of development. So I, I think we don't want to be in the way, but we need to make sure that they're being deployed safely, and that's our top priority. Yeah, I agree. As an aside, you know, I, I hear from multiple manufacturers in Kansas um, of all sizes that just talk about how long it takes to for the FAA to respond to new ideas on, on how do we do things better, how do we innovate, how do we make sure that the U.S. continues, to, that we are the world leader uh, in the aviation space. A big part of that, of course, is manufacturing. A big part of that is having an FFA that's, that's adaptable, um, understands technology, understands um, where the industry's heading, and, uh, and how do we partner together to promote safety. So, um, last question. Um, in your testimony, you outlined several initiatives on increasing the air traffic controller workforce. What strategies are you implementing to bolster other fields in the aviation force, such as aircraft mechanics, pilots, um, uh, other segments of the industry? No, that's, a, <clears throat> that's a great question, and I, I'm, I'm remiss for not mentioning that we're actually hiring all these sectors. The controllers are sort of the most immediate safety need for us, uh, but we're hiring in all sectors, and we're competing with all those other industries you just mentioned uh, in, in a market that is, is a pretty good market if you're an employee. Uh, so so I've, I've often said I'm the chief recruiting officer for, for the agency, so we're doing direct outreach to schools. Uh, we're trying to cast as broad a net as we can to, to interest people into coming into the FAA. And maybe they come in for 30 years or maybe just three years. So we want to make it easier for folks to come through and, and have an experience there and then maybe go do something else afterwards. So uh, it is a priority and it's not an, an easy one to, to get after. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. With that, I yield back.